and welcome and this is Dimitri hope you guys are doing well so what are we going to do today today I'm going to showcase the template for VS Code that will help you to develop mods in Daisy so I did that last year but I decided to rework it to make it even more efficient and more easy to use yeah that's possible so you guys may know that if you want to do mods in Daisy you need to use the workbench which can be quite a pain to set up and quite a pain to use I'm not saying it's not the right way or you should not do it because it can give you interesting features such as uh, reload loading, which I think is the main reason why people use the workbench, among other things, among the particles editor animation and also uh, the UI work. Uh, but for the scripting part, if you're more interested in about the developer approach and you're familiar with VS Code, what I'm going to suggest and present right now will help you to have something that is similar to other coding environment and that can be more efficient for you to work with. So this will not be free. This will be available on my coffee shop. You can buy it if you want it. I'm not forcing you to do it. You can create it your, yours with your own ideas if you want. I'm just showcasing mine that I took hours to create it, even weeks, and I hope you will like it. So let's see about the preview. All right, so first thing, I've already created a folder that I want to have my mod template there. So I have my workspace that will allow, you, allow me to start the VS Code right away, but you can just create your own folder and then open it in the in VS Code. So now that we are in VS Code, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and do create project from templates. We're going to select our Daisy VS Code template, which will be created uh, in the installation process. I'm going to choose a name for my mod. I'm going to call it test mod. And my environment will be automatically set up based on the information that I want. So I will have all my uh, shortcuts for my tasks that I want to execute for this project that will allow me to build my PBOs, start the server, start the client, uh, stop everything, show my logs on the client side, on the server side, and show my logs from the mod itself. So you're going to find uh, a lot of things in this template. So if I go from top to bottom, First, we're going to have the recommended extension that will allow you, allow you to get full experience of these templates. Uh, so we've got Gini that uses ChatGPT for coding purposes. We've got the project template that I just used. Uh, we've got PowerShell that is uh, highly used for the scripts. And we've got the tasks that allow me to have every of my tasks set up for this project into a navigation bar on the bottom. So that's for the VS Code stuff. Then we've got the additional commands that are PowerShell scripts that allow me to do a lot of interesting things like showing the crash log, showing the uh, mod log file of the of my project. And everything, as you can see, is renamed based on the name of my template project that I created. Uh, following that, we've got the config folder that contains the scripts that allow me to add mods from my workshop folder. So let's say I want to add with this template to start CF, I will type CF, choose to add CF. I can add other mods. I don't know if I want, um, let's say, uh, expansion. Then I can check for all of mods that are my uh, workshop and I can choose which one I want to add by selecting the number. And then it will be added in this mod.txt that will represent uh, the launch parameter for my mod list. So I don't really need those. Actually, I've already added them, especially for the CF and VPP. Then I've got the source folder that will contain my mod folder, my template mod folder that I've uh, that's created automatically. So it will be already set up with the name of the template you choose. Uh, it will have the credits order, everything from the game. And you're going to have inside a ready-to-use logging system that uses log level that you can use for client and server side at the same time, which will allow you to be able to track what's going on with your mods for production, for developing, and for debugging. So everything will be uh, started when the server starts. So you will be able to see in the console what's going on. That is going for the source. So that's what's going to happen is what's in the source will be packed into a PBU when we when we press build or we execute the script. 
And then what's going to happen is the test mod folder will be packed into a PBO, into target, into client. For the server part, that will be the server side part. So if you're creating server and client separate mods uh, style, you may need to add your part in that one. And then when you start the server, it will check for the server side, but not add it on the client side. We've got a git ignore because obviously this template comes with a git. So if you want to do versioning and source control, you have a git already set up, which is I think quite nice. And you've got the following PowerShell script that are the most important, such as building, launching the server, launching the client and stopping everything. So now that I've said all of that, let's uh, try to see what's going on. Let's uh, build and start the Daisy server. So if I press on my uh, shortcut here, you can see it build the PBO and then it start the server, starting Daisy server. And then it looks for logs to be in my folder. It actually finds them. Compared to the previous version that I've released, now we've got color for the font based on the log level we find. So for warnings, we have a specific color. For errors, we've got another. And for debug, etc. We've got other colors. The idea is that we can read more easily what happens in my logs. And as you can see here, we've got the test mod has started, which has been printed into the mission.server. If I want this one, I will need to click on the server test mod logs, for example. So that's what you can do with it. So it's pretty efficient because my server right now has started with everything required. So if I want to start the client with the same mode, I just have to press this and it will automatically start the client and shut down the uh, PowerShell script as we don't need it. If you could take a look on the right, you can see all the PowerShell script that are executed with the name of uh, the current script we actually executed, which is I think quite nice. So if you've got multiple ones for multiple logs, you can see them uh, in this side. So for example, if I want to see the client script log and the client crash log, you can see that they are linked because they are both on the client side. Same for the server script log and server crash log, they are also linked. This way you can follow and track both at the same time. And I think it's quite, uh, it's quite nice. All right, so as you can see, my game is starting at the same, at the same time. So, from my point of view, this is pretty fast because it it evol it involves a couple of sets, a couple of clicks, and then everything is starting on this, on this way. You can just uh, start coding your project here, and you're you're good to go. Obviously, you need to set up your server, you need to set up your Daisy client and your Daisy tools if you need a bit, and obviously this template uh, on the first uh, installation process. But except that, this is pretty fast and efficient. So if you guys like it and wants to use it. It will be a tutorial available on my coffee shop once you bought the template. I hope to see you guys there.